Edward here from ERViewer.com. I have another video for you. Uh, again, I'm exploring continually this idea of uh, glial cells uh, being infused or illuminated with these second reality inputs or quantum images. Uh, I'm interested in shape form recognition and mental processes, uh, Ingo Swan's ESP core, that kind of thing. Um, and that's what I'm looking for when I'm going into these experiments and these sessions is I'm looking for these things. Uh, every once in a while I'll get uh, the opportunity to have the my favorite experience, uh, the, the number one most experience, most important experience uh, that I'm looking for with remote viewing is when I find myself or my awareness at a molecular level or a subatomic level. Um, these are my absolute most favorite experiences. Uh, they've happened several times. Um, and uh, when I'm lucky enough to, to find myself experiencing it, um, I, it feels very much at home to me. It's what I, I love the most. Um, and again, it doesn't happen very often. I cannot force it to happen. When I do, if I do try to force it to happen, I'll, typically I'll trigger the mental process called imagination, and then I'll just find myself uh, in some type of fantasy about it. Uh, but when it, when, it, when it happens for real, it feels very different, obviously. Um, understanding the difference between an input and uh, a, a mental image or creative additions or imagination is part of the process of learning in, in regards to remote viewing. Um, but again, when I find myself on the atomic or subatomic or molecular level, it feels very much at home to me. This is why remote view is to, to experience these things, as I feel it is directly related to this second reality or this quantum field. Uh, where, where these inputs come from, um, these, these spectrums, um, where, where these inputs exist in point, at these points in time and space, and uh, that way down on, on this um, you know, quantum level, you know, where these uh, closer to you know, where these um, uh, molecular compounds are, are, are close to, to this reality, in my, in my opinion. Um, the target uh, for this session, uh, which you know, most people who, who will look at this will look at the target and look at what, what, I was, uh, what was happening in my experience of the remote viewing session and say that I'm completely out of my mind. Uh, it was a total miss uh, and um, I'm just you know, living in some kind of a fantasy. But I was not satisfied with the feedback uh, per what I experienced. Uh, the target ended up being the M1 Abrams tank a military tank used um, by our military. Uh, it's a very advanced tank. Uh, and so I wanted to research it to find out what was unique about this, about this tank uh, so that I could find some kind of understanding of what I was so drawn to in this experience that I could find that would relate to this tank. Um, and what I found was that the the uh, armament what what makes this tank so unique is that it uses this type of armor that is a a compound called uh, boron carbide it's a it's a ceramic carbon material uh, it's called a, a, a boron uh, carbon ceramic material that is extremely hard and that and that's what uh, makes this this particular m1 so unique is that it utilizes this uh, boron carbide ceramic material to protect it from uh, not only uh, strikes of, uh, of armaments and, and that kind of thing and its ability to absorb them, but also its ability to absorb neutrons and ionized radiation. It has the ability to absorb these compounds, which makes it very important uh, on the battlefield. Unfortunately, the, the utilization of this compound is in uh, warfare, uh, unfortunately, but um, it's used in other things as well. But that, my target was, was this tank, and, and that's what's so important about it. Um, but bringing that back to, to what I experienced in this session and, and why I had to research it, because this session, the experience I was having was, was very, it had that, that unique quality that I look for, which is something real. There's something real going on. And when I find myself being pulled to this molecular level um, in, in, in the specific feel that it has makes it more important to me. And I have to find out what it is that I'm drawn to and why this is so important to me. Um, so I had to research uh, boron carbide and how it's, how it's, uh, how it's made and, and the, the specific compounds and elements 
uh, that that it's comprised of and how it's synthesized or or what it how the molecular structure is formulated to make it into the boron carbide as opposed to a boron trioxide or one of the other oxides um, that uh, were of, of the, the different uh, boron family that it comes from and makes it so unique to this specific armament or what it's used for on this tank. And so that's what I, I had to, to research based on what I was experiencing in the session was how the this molecular structure was formulated or, or a part of it was was removed and how it was removed I became fascinated with the molecular structure itself and I became fascinated with a, 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 a an element of that molecular structure that had to be removed in order to formulate this specific molecular structure and how and why and what was so important I became fascinated with the idea of the formulation of the specific molecule. Um, and that's what was so important to me or so interesting to me or what made this session so um, rewarding to me and really fired up my, my whole brain um, with, a, with a heightened sense of, of curiosity and excitement. Um, so if there are people out there who understand this type of molecular structure uh, and this type of chemistry and all that kind of stuff, I would love to get some feedback on, on it because um, I'm not a, a chemist or a scientist. I don't fully understand uh, all of these things. All I look at is the experience that I'm drawn to, um, which is another interesting factor as well um, because remote viewing typically is done uh, f uh, mostly for other people to solve other people's problems or somebody has a question or whatever and they're looking to solve it and a, a typical good remote viewer is someone who can tune into what that person is wanting to answer and then they can provide information that is important to that other person for me uh, i've had experiences many experiences where i am doing that for other people but what i find most important for me as a remote viewer is to find these things that that i become absolutely fascinated with and drawn into them and then i can go and explore and explore and and exist within that thing that is most fascinating to me may not be the most fascinating thing to what the what a tasker is looking for or whatever so that might make me a bad remote viewer um, in regards to to that kind of client based remote viewing where I'm I, again as you know as I mentioned in my videos I'm not that interested in, in that kind of thing I'm interested in being pulled into what what is fascinating to me what, and, and, and I've, as I've mentioned earlier in my videos of the process of remote viewing, certain uh, emotions get triggered, and these are these are your your basic emotions of happy and angry and you know or, or joy or whatever. These are the the lesser maybe the lesser understood emotions of of fascination, of curiosity. Uh, these types of emotions that when they're triggered, some different type of neurotransmitter is released and, 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 and I, I'm looking in at possibly when these neurotransmitters are released these different parts of the brain then become active that can that are processing this, this information or are closer to where this information is um, uh, you know again processed and, and then becomes available and so that's what I'm, I'm interested in I love it when I when when I go into into a mental process of fascination um, that's where I want to stay and it happens when again I'm pulled into this molecular realm the subatomic realm um, this where where it gets so small and intrinsic that I just I want to stay there um, so that's that's what this was about uh, again if anyone's going to watch this session uh, keep in mind um, that uh, this is what what I'm looking at. I'm I'm drawn into something specifically interesting to me, uh, and and that's that's what's important to me. So I hope you find this interesting, and many more to come.
Glio, glio, glio. Glio, glio, I want to feel, feel. I want to feel, feel the glio, glio. Feel the glio. I have a target here. I want to experience I want to experience the whole thing, but I also want to experience specific things of interest that I can verify only to show that I have been able to bring my consciousness and bring my awareness to the second reality. The second reality images or light spectrums illuminate my glial cells I want to, I want to experience that, I want to feel that, I want to be able to see it in the video. I want to see the second reality, that's, that's what I'm after, I want to see the second reality. Five, five, six, four. White, purple, dim, dense, moving, yellow, bright, dense, stony. Okay, it's kind of image in my mind of a big rock. Firm. Five, five, six, four. Tubular. Large. Dimpled. Flat. Soft. Moving. Getting a word, something, a word that starts with cat, categorize cat, catastrophe, category, the sound of that word, five, five, six, four, five, five, six, four, dense, Bright, flat, angular, large, humid, steamy. Can you this image in my mind or memory comparison here of steam rising? Steam rising, yellow. Um, this could be a random thought here, or unimpeded, but a building, and that just came in as a word, and not an image, or at least the image never made it above the threshold, but the word did. Alright, let's try. I'm not really feeling anything just yet. Let's try again. Five, five, six, four. Five, five, six, four. Five, five, six, four. Close. K. 
Again, I'm getting this word cat with that. Like a tic-tac-toe. But something about the, something about the words. But the sound of the words, cat, tack, tick tack, five, five, six, four, white, again, simmering. And that's giving me a, a memory image of a cup of tea. Simmering, yeah. Something, something coming off here. Yeah, heat rising. images in my mind of like a, a lake or a pool of water uh, that is foamy and steamy, steamy. Right, that rising up feeling I can kind of, that I'm getting a sense of that, right? I'm getting a sense of a feeling, anything right now that may be infusing itself. It's this idea of, of rising or foam. Five, five, six, four. Five, five, six, four. Bright. Flashy, flashy, you know, some, some aspect of natural or nature. Flashy, bright, moving. Again, I'm getting this, this sound of the word, cat. Catastrophic, category, cat, something like that. Green, dimpled, yeah, dimpled, like. Try a sensory dump here to get myself a little further in here. Five, five, six, four. White, green, blue, yellow, flashy, moving, edged, night, inside, above, hard, solid, curved, green. Like a greenery, greenery, silver, moving, flashy. Also getting this, could be random thought here, but fish, fish, green, blue, blue, yellow. Right. 
still not feeling it. Let me go back. Let me try to pull something out of this. I felt something out of this idea here. So I want to go back to that and try to get back into what may be infused in these cells. I'm um, rising out. So let's just, let's just stage five of this rising. Uh, steam, um, sounds, echoes, bubbling, um, motion, uh, transference of energy, transference of energy or heat. Um, lifting off of that kind of thing, rising up, light, it's light, weight, lightweight, bubbling up, bubbling up, that kind of thing. Emanating, emanating, dripping. Humid. Damp. Colorful. Try another day. Let me try another sensory dump here. Five, five, six, four, five, five, six, four, five, five, six, four. Five, five, six, four. Inside, grooved, damp echoes, echoes large, silver, metallic, dense, covering, covering, that's an interesting word, covering. Uh, top, on top, covering, 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 uh, blanketing, this is giving me memory comparisons with like a cloud cover, cloud cover, covering on top. And I'm getting memory comparisons here, the mountains. Mountains, that kind of thing. Covering. Dipping. Dipping into okay, this image of like dipping something in. Kind of thing. An image of my interesting idea. Interesting idea. Dipping into tasting.
flavors. Uh, dipping sampling. This is these are I, these feel like ideas. This feels like an idea of sampling, taking a sample from something, testing. Um, You know, like uh, under a microscope. This is an idea of like taking a sample, putting a sample under a microscope. That kind of thing. You know, taking a sample. That feels like an idea. Kind of feels yellowish. Yeah. Green on top. You know, a top layer. You know, a top layer of something. Substance, compound. A substance or a compound, that's what it feels like. Like a, uh, a hill or a pile. Like that. Let me try one more, one more sensory dump and see if something else pops in here. Five, five, six, four. Five, five, six, four. Five, five, six, four. Yellow. Bright. And you're getting this random without kind of camping. Edged. Together is word coming in together. Edge bright, stained, stained like a, again, it's like this minerals, minerals, stained, you know, copper, copper ore, that kind of thing, that kind of thing, like earth, earth compounds. Earth compounds, that kind of thing. Metals. Metallurgy. That kind of thing. Like, uh, these are ideas coming in alchemy. Alchemy, that kind of thing. That kind of thing. Like a lab. Yeah, you know, alchemy. Extracting compounds. Elements. Elements is a good word. Elements. For what though? For what? Elements. What is the extracting? For the extracting compounds and elements, though, from what? Well, study, experiment, um, expanding, expanding knowledge. That kind of thing. Expanding knowledge, gaining knowledge. Gaining knowledge, extracting, extracting. Ex 
extracting, extracting. Heat, this idea here of heat. Um, Changing the compound, changing compound or element, element. Like uh, these are more ideas here, like removing atoms changing its molecular structure, molecular change. Molecular change, the heat will do that. That's kind of how it feels. When a compound changes, When a compound changes due to a heat exchange or environmental um, heat, kind of feels like it's just some kind of the first thing that comes to mind, or environmental environmental impact. to alter its chemistry. Alter the chemistry. This is giving memory comparisons of, of a bomb. A bomb, but I'm not interested in that though. I'm interested in altering the chemistry. I really want to look into that. I'm going to look into that more. Get rid of that. Extracting compounds. Altering, changing, molecular, molecular change, yeah, changing the molecule, the compound chain of heat elements. Uh, well, what are they doing now? Why? For what reason now? Changing molecular, molecular change. Study, study the compound. Study the compound. What element is it though? It's an element. An element. Okay, there's a random thought here. Beef. Beef. You know, cattle. <sighs> Stay the compound. It's an element. What's. Why? The compound changes. Yeah, it vibrates. Vibrates. Vibrates something off, you know, like you have a molecular structure like that. What would remove that? 
we heat unlock it from a molecular bond or hold. Well, what would do that though? How does that happen though? How does that happen? And why does it not happen here? Here, removing this bond here. Removing that bond, removing that molecular bond. How and why? Does that need to be removed? Is it just about this one? I mean, what crude generic default, but. Pressure, pressure snaps, snaps it off, that kind of thing. A pressure specific to this? Specific to that? A weak? Point. The weak point. Pinpointing the weak bond. Pinpointing the weak bond. Something is separating. Something is separating. like that and there's this and this is what needs to be removed or this is what is being separated forced forced force like a force here How would it do that though? How would it do that? How could it pinpoint that specific element? 
or pinpoint the specific bond. Pinpoint the bond. Pinpoint the bond right there. Specific point, but how would you calculate that specific bond? How do you find that bond? Here. You have to find it. You have to find it. But there's some organic characteristic. Organic characteristic. Find the organic characteristic. The organic characteristic. And and its weakness. And its weakness. And then pinpoint onto that to resonate it free. To separate. To separate it out from the rest. Something like that. Looks like this. Needs to be removed. Like this needs to be removed. That's the feel. And it feels like that's what's happening here. Okay, that feels more complete to me now. feels more complete to me now that I was getting to this idea here. <clears throat>